Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's video on garden pest and disease management, I'm gonna ask you a question. Why are you growing so much? And I'm gonna relate that to managing pests and disease. Also gonna take a look at white flies, talk about the treatment for that, how do you manage that? Before we get started, this is gonna be an ongoing series for 2023 and every Monday I'm going to be putting out something with respect to managing pests and disease. Real quick, give you some ideas of what will be coming. The damage on the beets here are leaf miners and I treat that with insect dust. Beets can take a lot of damage, they're going to be okay. Coming over here to the potatoes, starting to see some fungal issues on there. That's fine, these potatoes are finishing up. But that really came when we got a lot of rain and humidity. Colorado potato, potato beetle damage holes right in here, they can be managed. White flies will roll in and cover most of your brassica plants. Cabbage, broccoli, brussels, collards, kale, anything in that family and I'll show you what that looks like. Also you'll notice as we walk around there's lots of white butterflies around here. They're laying green cabbage worms all over the place putting holes in the plants. So the question I asked you is why are you growing so much? There are three red Russian kale plants in here and I'm just not harvesting out of here quick enough. So you really want to set how much you grow based on how much you need but really how quickly can you harvest it and use it because a dense planting of kale even if it was a single row not harvesting the leaves you're just setting up this perfect environment for white flies to roll in and this is what they look like you can see right by my thumb the white webbing right in there those are white flies you see them a little bit better right up there and they lay eggs a little bit of nesting they're going to hatch and that's going to be a problem there's some more things right in here because these leaves aren't being harvested and you know in a non-gross kind of way we are a predator to all the insects and problems that come in. We take the leaves, there might be some eggs on there, we wash them, we process them. We're removing the eggs that are going to cause problems in our garden. By having so much kale that I'm not harvesting quick enough and just not using, I'm just setting up a great environment for pests and disease to show up. There's a white butterfly in here too. It just went right down into the center. You can see it maybe fluttering around. That white butterfly is laying eggs on these leaves too, which are basically um, cabbage worms, green worms, you can get army worms. Any of these moths or butterflies that come in lay eggs on the undersides of the leaves. So the first thing we're going to do is inspect the undersides of the leaves. Here's another example. Let's see. You can see the white right there. Those are white flies. Now there's some eggs right here that are yellow. Got to research that because it's a potential ladybug eggs are yellow too. So there's good and bad insects. First thing I want to do is grow the amount of crops that I can manage. Meaning, you know, they get to the size, I'm harvesting them. They're giving me the food that I need. They're still growing and I'm not outpacing them. I'm not running out. But once you get to the point that you have more plants than you need, you're really causing more problems for yourself. You have to tend more, you have to fertilize more, you have to manage pests and disease more. So you really want to figure out the balance. The other thing you want to do, as soon as you notice white flies, write that down in a notebook so that you know the date that they show up and then next year you'll use that information. I'll teach you how to use that to prevent problems. So the lower leaves should have been pulled out of here a long time ago. We'll let in airflow. Again, there's no place for pests and disease to land if we're eating the leaves. The pattern right here those are leaf miners and they're all going to get removed. You can see the pattern over here. They get right in between the top and bottom of the leaf and they just make these trails. You have to learn what the different um, patterns are of problems. Like when an insect comes, you know that's a leaf miner. When you see the white, see if there's any on here, when you see that white pattern, you know that it's white flies. Each treatment's going to be a little bit different, but you do have to learn what are the different patterns telling you what disease you have or what pest you have. But the problem here is all these leaves should have been eaten a long time ago. Kale can also put out these side shoots and they should have been removed. It's just creating too dense of an environment in there. And again, I should be eating that. 
Before we go back to the kale, and you see how much I removed, I threw everything into my compost pile. That's a lot of kale. I should be eating that, I should be harvesting it. Now, of course, my channel is a teaching channel, so I grow more than I actually need, but that's the question you wanna be asking yourself. Should I be growing less? Because if you're not using it, it's really, again, ticking down that path where you might get more pests and diseases than you normally would if you were just growing less of a specific variety. As we walk back towards the kale, this is some kohlrabi. It needs to get pulled out. All that damage, chewing worms, either from that white butterfly you saw or some other butterflies. And when you flip this over, you can see right there, one of the caterpillars. Neem oil really does help control them. That's what I'm gonna be using. And you can see actually, they're all right up here. So you're looking for signs. When you see these holes, flip it over, time to spray time to remove the leaf and then you can also see the white flies right there coming in so you always want to be identifying what might be ailing your plants just thinking about it real quick the worms that I saw on those leaves had stripes so I think that they're army worms and they're really really devastating here's the kale harvested so to speak leaves removed and you always want to harvest kale from the bottom this is what it should look like lots of airflow you're gonna still see the white moth is still flying around but you're gonna have less problems this way when I start turning these leaves over see a little bit you know there's some white flies right there so they still need to spray but you want to remove everything you're not going to really eat or use don't save a plant or parts of a plant that you're not going to use it's a waste of time remove it so we've removed a lot of the problems and now we'll get to spraying we're going to look real quick because we saw arm there's some more a worm right there it's going to be hard to see but you see a little green worm time for the neem oil the recipe is Two, two tablespoons of neem oil in one gallon of water and then you have to add soap so that when you shake it the oil disperses through the water I use Castile type soaps which are very very mild so I use one to two tablespoons if you're using dish detergent soaps like that start with one teaspoon to two teaspoons you don't want to overdo it kale leaves are really thick really strong so I'm using a higher end dose of the neem oil for managing the problems on these plants and then with an infestation you want to be spraying every five to seven days to get it under control do that two or three times otherwise you can be spraying every 10 to 14 days it just really depends on what's going on in your garden so let me make up the batch and again it's going to be two tablespoons of neem oil 100 percent cold pressed i sell that at my seed shop you can check out the video description you want to make sure you have cold pressed neem oil because it has the azadirachtin in it and that's what kills chewing insects the oil itself is going to coat the white flies and help kill them two tablespoons again of neem oil in a gallon of water and one to two tablespoons of the Castile type soaps or one to two teaspoons of the more harsh detergent soaps and this is what your kale should look like you know you really do have to ask yourself a question if your kale's not looking like this why are you growing so much figure out the good a good balance between what you're growing what you're harvesting and you'll have less problems with those pests and diseases we're on the other side of the kale plants I'd like to have several different one gallon sprayers for different oils um, fungicides etc and then I mix them and I use them you know accordingly by removing the bottom leaves first we're getting rid of the problematic leaves and then you're just going to take your spray and you're going to soak the undersides let me get this in frame really well you're coating the white flies you're putting the neem oil across the leaves tops and bottoms so when you get those chewing army worms green worms whatever's coming in they chew it they get the azadirachtin inside their gut shuts that down and then they die you can also put dust down you could use an insect dust right now you could use different kinds of sprays but the process is pretty much the same i like using the neem oil because it is organic but if i had an infestation maybe the neem oil is not working i would try something stronger something a chemical type something that i'm comfortable with organic is wonderful unless you're getting this huge infestation and it's wrecking your garden maybe you have to use something stronger i always start out with the organic sprays and because we've removed so many leaves you know i can just reach right in there and just spray nicely so i'll be doing this every five to seven days because of a little bit of an infestation that's starting i want to spray regularly so i kill and contact the white flies now 
anything that might be hatching in the future, you know, over that five, seven day span, I'm spraying again, and then I'm gonna do this a third time, and that will get that problem under control. Please subscribe and follow. Every Monday or so, I'll be doing a video on pests. videos on managing pests and diseases in your garden. I'll be talking about treatments, identifying, most important thing again, really identify what shows up, learn what it is, mark it down in your calendar, apply the appropriate treatment. But the question today that I really want people to think about is, why am I growing so much? And really match what you're able to tend to, eat, with what you're growing. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And please subscribe. I'll be doing a whole series on managing problems in your garden. Thanks for watching.